Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're going to be covering my first Dow Winnie on the channel. Now, I have drunk a few Dow Winnies in my time, but I have never covered one on the channel, mainly due to just lack of getting hold of it. You know, it's not, it's very available, especially the 15 and this. Uh, I've just never got around to buying it. That's all. That's literally the only reason why I haven't covered it so far. This year, in fact, it would be 2019 technically, I got this for Christmas. It was on my list as something I wanted to try, and uh, one of my family members bought this for me to review, I guess, and, and hopefully enjoy, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. It has only recently really come out, so if you think like 2015 was when it came out, so it's been out about five years now, about four and a half years, depending on, the, on when it came out in the year, but it's really kind of a fresh, no-age statement whiskey in comparison to some of the other stuff that's out there. It's a Diageo malt. It's a 43 percenter. It's definitely got added color in it because my bottle says uh, Mitt Farb stuff on it. So that's very indicative of added color. But even without that, we'd be pretty sure it would do. And in the UK, this sells for about 35 to 40 pounds. Although I have to say in the run up to Christmas, you do get good deals on this. So it does tend to be a bit cheaper. So only take that sort of monetary value, a pinch of salt, but you, you probably will find it a lot cheaper than that. The interesting thing about this is that they say it's crafted by the cold now uh, a lot of this stuff that i'm going to talk about now um, i'm not terribly keen on the idea of it it seems like marketing gump to me but we'll talk about it anyway crafted by the cold darwin is meant to be one of the highest and coldest distilleries in scotland it's not actually that high in the grand scheme of things i think it's something like 300 odd meters above sea level which I'm sure many of you watching around the world will sort of scoff at that being anywhere near high. But in terms of Scottish distilleries, it's one of, if not the highest. I think there's another one that it's a bit of a contest with. As I said earlier, it also is very cold there. They only use spirits distilled between October and March in the year in this production. I have to say, I think that is kind of nonsensical because... Ultimately, the distillation process is a scientific process. There's some art to it for sure, but it's literally the separation of alcohol from water. That's it. You know, I mean, obviously we're talking, you know, a bit deeper esters and things like that, whatever. But we're talking about the separation of alcohol and water, leaving that behind. That happens at a very specific temperature and uh, well, depends on the still that you're using. But it doesn't matter what temperature it is outside you will still will still perform at that same temperature. The only thing I can think is that maybe the temperature where they store this would make a difference, but then every cask in that warehouse is subject to the same kind of environment. So I have to say, yeah, maybe if I've missed something there, you want to drop, drop a comment below to let me know why you think that this could be a legit claim. Personally, I think it's a bit whatever, you know, put it on the box, but who cares? Let's move on and talk about the whiskey itself. They do say this should be drawn from the freezer. They have suggested again on the box that I put this in the freezer and let it warm up as I drink it. Now, if you've seen my White Walker video, another Diageo bottling also suggested to put in the freezer. I covered them side by side and the, I did not like the, the one that came out the freezer at all. Um, and I barely liked the one that, uh, that, that was uh, room temperature. I've opted this time not to do that. I only have the one room temperature dram because I can't see any good reason why this whiskey should be chilled. You know, if most most times, oftentimes, you would chill a liquor, a, a spirit or whatever to calm it down, to keep those harsher flavours in the glass that, you know, that's they're, they're not dispelling that many vapours, that many flavours, that many smells, and it just becomes easier to drink. Personally, I don't think that's a good way to assess a whiskey. That's just my opinion. If you've tried this from the freezer and you think that it really does make a difference, then do let me know below. But I have to say, I think that's a bit of a gimmick. Let's get onto the taste in itself and see what we've got in the glass. Now, as we said, added colour, so we can ignore whatever is in here, apart from the Jason Whiskey Wise glass. Let's get onto the nose. Now, for me, it's, it's actually got quite a nice nose, you know, for, for all the negativity so far about it. Really, the only negativity I've got about this dram is the uh, marketing nonsense that goes around it. But on the nose, it's a very floral, very heather forward nose. Lots of honey in there as well. Mm. But also 
kind of like orchard fruits, like apples, that kind of thing. It's more like green apples than red apples. I always talk about apples when I'm talking about Speyside whiskies, although this is a Highland. It's very similar on the nose to that sort of thing with that added heather vibe to it. Actually quite a tasty nose. Mm. Let's get on to the palate. Mm. Okay. So on the palate, it's on a bit of a switch around. Very honey forward. It's not like a super sweet honey. It's not sickly honey. But there is some honeyness going on there. There's some spices coming through as well. Things like cinnamon, nutmeg, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's got quite a decent spice on it. And there's a pretty decent finish on it as well, to be honest. Medium, not long, but medium spiciness there as well. Let's have another little sip of that. Yeah, and uh, some of those apple notes are coming through the end, back end as well. Now, I have to say, generally speaking, this is a uh, extremely okay whiskey. I, I wouldn't want to give it any more kudos than that. Okay, and definitely not bad. Drinkable, for sure. I uh, will definitely enjoy this bottle. This is going to go very neatly on my to-drink cabinet. You know, that it's I've got a cabinet where... Things go that it's just okay to drink, you know, whatever whatever mood you're in, just go nuts on that. And then there's the special ones where, you know, it requires a bit more thought. You know, if I, if I really think I deserve a nice dram, I'll go there. But uh, this is going to go on the to drink and hopefully it'll just go down quite nicely. So, yeah, it's one of those drams that's a bit of, you know, a bit, a bit of to and fro, I have to say. it's uh, It hasn't got a very good price. The 35 to £40 pounds is uh, ludicrous, in my opinion. Um but as I said, at the right at the top of the show, if you're picking this up just before Christmas, when I think the majority of this sells, in fact, I have to say, I've probably recovered this a bit too late here in March. This probably isn't even on the shelves anymore. But uh, you'll probably get this for about £25, and in, in which case, it's it's a reasonable drink. You know, it's one of those things you can pick it up 25 quid, you can drink it over the Christmas period and finish the bottle and, and really not worry about it whatsoever. 35 to 40 is an absolute no-go for me. It definitely isn't worth that. It's a reasonable drink and you can carry on drinking it to your heart's content. Absolutely fine. But I think you might feel a little bit disheartened to have spent that much when you can get way better drams for that same sort of price. Here's looking at you, Kill Karen. Probably shouldn't tell you people about Kill Karen. I have covered it, but it really is one of the most affordable drams out there for its style. It's mwah, absolutely brilliant. And when this is in the same price bracket as that, I don't like to compare drams against each other usually, but that's that's really my price comparison. However, this knows what it is. It is what it is. It knows what it is. It's got a nice neat 43%, so they haven't gone down to the 40. I have to say, I think this would be probably pretty bad at 40. It would be quite thin, very watery. And I admire it for knowing what it is. You know, it's a, it's a, a, a Christmas drink. It's a Christmas drink. You know, you, you get it at Christmas, you drink it, you forget about it until the next year, and you think I might fancy another bottle of that. That's exactly where you want to go with this.